I will call this meeting of the Kensington Elementary School Board to order at 6.02. Um, a non-public session can be called at any time in accordance with Chapter 91A, 3, 2, A, B, C, D, E, or I. And um, I'm going to start with our land acknowledgement state, uh, statement. This Kensington School Board meeting is located on Adakana, which is the traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land and waterways and the Alnabak, the people who have stewarded Indakana throughout the generations. We will teach others to know and honor Native Americans. And that is the statement that was brought to us by the third graders. Um, and I will open uh, public input right now at 6.03. So normally we would do the minutes, but on our agenda is Mr. Andres Media, who has a baby at home. So would you like to just hop on up to the front? Is that okay with you, Ben? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'm here just to give a couple of updates, of, you know, DIJ. Uh, so one update is um, last week we actually had the opportunity to, and we. Uh, Chris Andrzejewski and David Ryan got the opportunity to present at a national conference in San Antonio um, on implementing and sustaining uh, diverse equity, inclusion, and justice um, in uh, white school districts, which was pretty awesome to be part of that session. And um, not many sessions like it at the conference, which I think was awesome. They interviewed us after and, and so on. So that was a, a really good uh, topic. Um, an opportunity around DIJ and basically talk about the work we're doing here in our district and how DIJ got started through community input and the DIJ teams at the schools and so on. Um, so that was nice. Uh, another update is, you know, last month uh, K-12 to leaders um, got to go through a DIJ workshop to learn about uh, bias. Um, and then this week they got to participate in a facilitator's workshop and learn how to facilitate uh, conversations and dialogue around with, with the equity lens. Um, and next month, for March uh, uh, 14 PD day, the in-service day, um, all staff get to uh, be part of an opportunity to, to go through that training as well um, and learn about DIJ. And our leaders will be helping facilitate that space, which is pretty awesome. You know, seeing that uh, go through, through our district. Um, we do have, I just came from a DIJ uh, chairs committee meeting, we meet monthly, so the DIJ chairs are members from all the DIJ committees that the schools have. Um, and through that, through that meeting, a monthly meeting, we do share learning with each other um, to build the capacity around DIJ in our schools. Um, we're also working on goals and strategies for DIJ for the SAU district, um, 16 district, um, which is pretty pretty nice that we're working on that. And that has different, uh, it can be a, a teacher, it can be a counselor, it can be a principal, assistant principal from the schools, all part of this team. Um, and we're representing all the schools in our district, which is pretty nice. Um, for, our, for, for the Kensington district, um, our uh, people are um, Becky and then also Ke Kelsey, the counselor. Um, which is Chelsea Escort. Yeah, also. Yeah, like yeah, like also. Sub substitute member yeah, yeah, schedules yeah. don't align. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty awesome to have them there and what we learn there, going and bringing it to the schools or just providing resources. Sometimes at those meetings, it's just uh, uh, them talking about what they're dealing with at their schools and or what activities they do, what program, what PDs, and they share that, that knowledge with each other to bring to each other's schools. Um, and then my, my uh, you know work here in Kenton is also working with Becky, you know, just serving as a resource, you know. Um, as for, for, for any material that's needed for PD or questions teachers have, uh, and also you know dealing with incidents and so on, by information, just being you know a, a listening ear and a thought partner on how to uh, do this work. So that's what we've been doing, um, and all the work that you know I've been focusing on and, and we've been focusing on is how to build capacity in our schools for others to do this work. So it doesn't just fall. You know, yeah. on one person, you know, sustaining the DIJ work in, in our schools. So, um, so that's that's the great work. That's my update. Yeah. That's great. Do you have any, any I have a few. Um, the the is there a way for us to see the presentation you guys did down in yeah. Texas? I would love to have that available. I think that would be really interesting. Um, 
so I'm just trying to get um, like a really clear idea of how, because these are such huge concepts and in some cases brand new ways of thinking for, for so many of us. So, um, and, and, and with elementary school kids, they're so young, um, which is great to start this now if it hasn't already been started in the home, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm, what, what is the plan in our school for, like, are we, are we updating the materials in the library? Are we integrating um, lessons about, um, you know, are, like, like people from diverse backgrounds into our lessons? Like, uh, not just racial diversity, but, you know, people with disabilities, people you know, from the LGBTQ spectrum, you know, all of that stuff. How, how is, what is the actual, what are the actual changes that are being done? D, all of the above. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, and I would think that some some teachers are uh, more ready for that than others, which is totally fine. Like yeah. you said, it's new concepts, people are learning this, and, um, and part of it too is like, you know, you're teaching the same stuff, you're just using other stories, you, you, you yeah. have representation of those identities, um, you're telling stories of, of resilience instead of victimization, you're yes. talking about historical market. So, so it is happening, and, and people are moving slowly, and it, uh, again, that's that's what it takes. You yeah. know? And, and some teachers are leading it, and other teachers can be like, oh, that's how you did that, and it works. Okay. You know? um, so yeah, it, that's how the, the work is being done. And I know you provided some examples. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think that yeah. some of the things are in my principal's okay. report too, but like that representation piece has been key. Yeah. I know um, and Sherry's been super thoughtful about some of the new books that she's brought into the library, and um, classroom teachers have been thoughtful about other books that they're bringing in. Again, same topics maybe that we've been yeah. teaching, but is the representation in the books maybe a little different than what we've had before? Um, so I do think that um, we are making those thoughtful decisions about different resources that are coming in. Yeah, and like I said, not just race, but ability right. and, um, you know, just all kinds of people right. represented. Hey, Becky and Nandi, so are those, are those coming through, like, regular meetings that you might have to talk through, you know, ideas and, and how you can try and implement, you know, better practices across schools? It, it, it's coming through resources. So if I find resources, you know, I share it with the educators, like, you know, I share it with the principal, like, hey, share this with your ed educators. Um, this is cool books or cool discussion guides or how to talk about certain identities. Um, okay, and, but that's that's more like a like an ad hoc type touch point, right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. Okay. And, and the, the teachers have access to me. So teachers who do need support, they do reach out and they have that conversation. Um, and like like uh, the DIJ committee that I spoke about earlier, that's the purpose of that is to provide that support so that those uh, DIJ committee members can go and provide that to their to their uh, educators at the, in the building. You know, like what, what kind of discussion that we have? But, oh, they they actually did this exact thing at another school. Why don't we try it out here? They did this PD. They had this kind of conversation. They used this uh, lesson in the classroom, and that, that's that's what's happening. And, um, that started just by schools giving updates to each other, and then people like, oh, I really like how y'all did that. And yeah. Taking ideas from so it is happening in that group, and then they bring that back to their staff meetings and their um, the GMT. Okay. Gotcha. Just to add on to that, so you know, we, we use a template it's called the Seven Forms of Bias. We run a lot of our resources through that, so it's making sure that it's telling voices oh, of all students. So that is socioeconomic, gender, race. Um, yeah, social emotional, so uh, it's making sure that it's not excluding someone. Right. Um, so that's something that we implemented about two years ago, and we're getting better with that. So we constantly are looking at that when we're bringing in instructional materials and resources. So that's a big piece that we've used. And that's across all of the SNU. That sounds great. So anything new at this point coming in through the schools is yeah, kind of going through that, that, through that lens. Yeah. 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 The, the teachers are really good. They share. I mean, when we do have common PD time or we get content area conversations going, they use it. So I just met with the social studies community today and we talked about what are you using? How are you using it? Um, talk to about the challenges, the barriers. Oh, I wouldn't use that. This became better. So yeah. we, we do that with, uh, we have four different content area groups I think meeting right now. So it, it, a lot of that discussion is about what are we using that can be consistent and it's going well. And then what's a barrier that we can break down? Yeah, I was thinking about the Ellis Island projects and how those might need to be changed or, you know, or just drastically changed. Open, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and some schools are changing. The district, has know, that already started? That yes, so yeah. Great. There's some schools that did something different last year and this year. You know. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
and the, yeah. the conversation working with the curriculum coordinators and the, the teachers who had questions and they yeah, we even shifted ideas. ours last yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, we haven't done it yet this year so I haven't seen my third grader through it yet <laughs> 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 I was looking at Andy because he also has a third grader in the class. So. Um, that's that's great. So yeah, I'm. I'm it, this is such a, a better idea of what of what um, the resources are and how they're being utilized. So because uh, I was wondering, you know, how often do you get to visit each of the schools? But it, in addition to that, you're also you you're you're kind of giving certain teachers in each school higher level of training so that they can provide resources, you're kind of delegating that, but then also available. And if you have those meetings regularly, then that does provide people an opportunity to say, hey, you know, now that I'm in the room with you, I never got around to emailing you, but now I can ask you, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then and also one, one other update I want to give is, uh, so the, the SAU-16 Anti-Discrimination Task Force, mm -hmm. we've been working uh, for the past year um, to draft up a protocol that when incidents, bias, discrimination happens in your schools, the steps you will take. That's great. Um, part of that protocol is the pre-work, part of it is what, happen, what you're doing when it happens, and then after. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when the incident happens, like how do you, like educational opportunities, restorative justice practices for whoever did the harming, mm -hmm. making sure we're taking care of the person who got harmed, um, and so on. So that that's a process that we're working on now, and that team uh, consists of uh, stakeholder, uh, all different stakeholders, so you have, um, uh, caregivers and parents from the community. You have assistant principals from all the different levels, elementary, middle, and high. Um, you have students from the high school. Uh, you have um, um, uh, central office staff there. Um, so it's a group of 15 people that have been working on this. And, and then also oh, each of those identities have to touch one of uh, the district towns. Mm -hmm. So that's also represented in that space. So it's pretty cool. It's been happening. and. Uh, we think by the end of the year we'll have a, a great protocol to, to, oh, to put great. out there as a as a draft and idea to everyone to see if this could work and, and so on. That's um, awesome. And of course, it's going to look different for elementary, middle, and high. Of course, all the schools uh, have different steps they take and also have different kinds of teams. You know, some schools have restorative justice teams, some schools have um, behavioral health teams. So right. it's going to look different, but the steps will, will, will uh, be useful and look the same, and they're all being looked at through an equity lens. So then that protocol will eventually be incorporated into the JICK policy, I'm assuming, or it's, will there be a new policy? Or uh, No, it, it, the policy says that we have to have a, a, a protocol to deal with okay. discrimination, so that would be part of the policy. The policy already says it. Policy okay, already says it, yeah. got it. And then would that information be available anywhere? Because it's, if it's not written, if the pro, it, will the protocol be I guess will the language of the protocol be added to that policy so that people can read it? They'll probably be like hyperlinked in it. So if okay. you have a policy, you click on it, you find the protocol. It'll be on. But all of it will be uh, people will have access to it. And part of putting out the, the policy with the new language and then also a new protocol is going to be a lot of education. So we want to make sure that we're yeah. providing space for community members to ask questions and understand it for educators who are going to be using the protocol now to understand it as well. And so on. So we're, we're thinking of all that as a, like a rollout thing. That's great. Sorry, I have so many questions. So, <laughs> the Anti Discrimination Task Force, where can people find out about that and what they're doing? Is that is there like a place online where they talk no, about that? No, no. Okay. <laughs> that's just, uh, I give update meetings at uh, the joint board. Yeah. Like, I mean, in, in the notes, that's yeah. where I would put information about the task force. Okay. And then, are there opportunities? Can we have opportunities for like town hall discussions kind of a thing? Like, I. I, I so um, I would have to go back to the task force. One of our community norms is that we don't <laughs> say, but I can bring the idea to them yeah. and say, hey, this is something that one of the boards want to do. Are y'all down for that? And if they agree, and then some students will come, some of the educators will come, you know, but we agreed that we would make all those decisions as a group, but I can bring the, 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 the ask and the idea to them. Yeah, yeah I just, um, just, just because um, I think for people who are, even think to pay attention yeah. and ask what's going on and look up that information, they can find it. Yeah. But for those who don't, they hear you know a quick sentence about what something is, and then they're they're they don't really understand the context behind it. So like I'm thinking to my mind, community outreach and public education about what it is you're doing and what you're not doing and what you want, you know what I mean. All of that stuff does need to be yeah. out there and and made very available. Yeah, yeah, and we plan on doing that once we have. Uh, 
That's great. Uh, we like with that, so it's been part of our conversation. Now. That's awesome. Get the community involved and make, make sure people understand. Perfect. So, yeah, if yeah. I don't have my policies mixed up, I think part of what you're talking about is actually embedded in with one of those policies yeah, we talked about tonight. Yeah, AC tonight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah a policy AC. <coughs> Great. Did you have any questions? I would love to open this up if you guys are okay with that. If anybody here has any questions, I mean, it's still public comment. So. Oh, I do. This is great. Thank you. Is that okay with? Is that, is okay, that okay, with, okay? Is that okay with you guys? Uh oh, we're small enough. No, no, you're good. You give me the pie. No, 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 you're good. <laughs> All right. So, you're drafting a protocol for incidents that occur. Are these incidents being tracked as far as numbers? Do you have amounts per school? Yeah, and yeah. Time, things like that. Yeah, so uh, Alma, uh, which is the the platform we use, allows us to collect that that data. You know, when an incident happens, they go in there and they put that in there and they tag it as either bias, um, and that's how we can pull like incidents that happen. We'll cover it. So we're still working on like more tags of what kind of bias it will be, but that's easy. You know, it's it's, it's contacting uh, this, the um, Alma and, and working on it. So we are collecting it. Um, before Alma, it, it was harder to track that, I would say. So I'm happy that we're doing this now. Um, before, it was, you know, me writing things in a notebook, you know, yeah. every right. time someone called me, or, but now it's more accessible for, for educators to go and put the reports in. Which is cool. okay. Will those be publicly available at some point? Uh, the I think yeah, we, the numbers, are not yeah. of course. The numbers, yeah. I, I think the numbers should be part of reports, and then we'll, uh, I think do it in the future. That I, I think we should have the numbers in the, in the reports. Probably not the specific incidents or where it happens. Of course, happens, but of course, as, yeah. As a, a district, this is how many uh, homophobic incidents we have. This is how many racist incidents, you know, classist incidents. Yeah. I think that should be part of it, so the community can be aware of what's happening in our, in our district. So that's and hopefully, they try to the right direction. Yes. Yeah. 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 And part of it too is, uh, and what I understand is that when this protocol, when the new protocol comes out and this new policy comes out, that we will see higher numbers. Doesn't mean they were not higher before. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we got to prepare for: is yes. that the numbers will be high because people now have this thing, this, this protocol to use, this, this policy that's supporting it and saying, you know, so we will we will see higher numbers. But that doesn't mean that those numbers are higher than before. Because now we're actually capturing. Yeah, we're capturing. Yeah. And then paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So another thing is a lot of the work that you've described sounds very uh, bottom up from the teachers to you, you as a resource. Yeah. And what is the what are the incentives for teachers to actually go to you? Like why would Shannon want to change her aside from her own personal if it, if it's just her her heart, it's pulling her. Yeah. Uh, that's cool, but I know that doesn't apply to every teacher in the district. So what's, what's, is it you guys? Are you leaning on the teachers to make them dig into DIJ? Oh, I can, I can answer it. Yeah. Uh, our goal is to build leadership capacity in this work. So that one person has to do it for 4,500 kids and 1,100 employees. Right. So he's our expert that we do a go to, and if there's really significant incidents, Andres should be called. And he has gone to elementary schools to work through, work through with teachers. Hey, I'm really struggling with this. So he has done one offs, but we are how we build that capacity in our building so that Shannon can go to Kelsey or Becky or Sherry and be like, hey, I'm, I'm struggling with this, and they can be that support for her right there. Mm -hmm. That way we build better capacity in our building. So it's not just one person, it's 100 people doing it. Sure. And next year it's 200. And so on and so forth. So that is the way that we want to grow this work out, yeah. with Andres being that kind of that seed, and it just blossoms with everybody else. Gotcha. And, and the, just thinking in this building, um, I think we've always tried to create a building where this is a safe community for all kids and all learners. And so I think the work really just matches and mirrors what we're trying to do in this building anyway. I think we're just maybe looking at it in a different thoughtful way of what does that mean all all learners, everyone has a safe place um, in the school. So I think for us, it fits into our mission of what sure. we're doing and what we've been doing for a long time. And, 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 uh, we, we provided uh, last year, we provided a community conversation that was open to everyone in the oh, district. Yeah. We were hoping that it was open to educators and then district-wide PDs as well. We, we did four of them last year and we have one coming up. And, um, so I, I think that's like the way of doing from like this is 
what we value. Uh, we want every student to feel like they belong. We want every student, no matter what, they need to be successful in our schools. And this is how we get there. Um, so that message is being uh, given, you know, supporting diverse equity, inclusion, and justice in our district. Um, and then teachers want to reach, you know, like it's, it's I don't think we're going to, uh, maybe go tell teachers they have to do it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's but what we, Yeah, no, no, I, I understand what you're saying, yeah. But it's, we are there as a resource. Um, and I have a, you know, email me, give me a call, and I come right over. Even if it's just for coffee, if they want to buy me a coffee. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I guess if I can just squeeze in one more. How are you guys tiptoeing around spurious complaints from the divisive uh, divisive concepts, law, and things like that. Um, is that are they coming up? Are, are complaints being filed? And how are you how are you teaching material around all that? Because that's such a you know yeah. I, I think um, you know understanding the law and making sure that we're following it. That's that's one piece. And I and I work with the educators as well around that, like making sure this is and and the other part is that we were never doing that in the first place. Of course. So, so it was put out and people got scared, like, oh, that's what you are Was I doing that? Not knowing, because it got, got so big. Um, so just working with, with the teachers, you weren't actually doing that before. Your slides were perfectly fine. The lesson you were teaching was perfectly fine. Uh, maybe change this word or how you say it, but you know, you're not breaking the law. So I think that's, that's like guidance that way. And um, I'm connected to the other DIJ directors across the state, so we meet weekly. You know, uh, and we talk about the stuff that's going on and, and, and what advice they're getting and, and what advice their legal teams are giving. You know, and we we talk about that. So that's how we troubleshoot things as well. But we really haven't had anyone uh, that, that I know of breaking <laughs> uh, the law. You know, we've been following it. And, um, but I think that's that's the big piece is like it coming out with not much guidance and just. You know, yeah. and, and I've, I've read it over and over. Sometimes I sit and read it over and over to make sure for every PD I do, for every question, like I'm looking over it over and over to make sure, nope, we did, we're not breaking that, nope, we're not breaking that. And we're good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for, for letting me. No, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thanks. Anybody else? All right. Thank you so much for coming. All right, cool. No, thank you, Andre, for the invite. I'm sorry I have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to my bed. She's teething right now. So. Oh. I didn't go to sleep till four o'clock this morning. I took it at six thirty. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Minutes. Um, yeah, okay. So we're looking at the January 11th public minutes. All right. Does anybody have any, uh, did anybody have any updates to those or uh, uh, amendments? I don't have any updates, Jennifer. There was something under section 4.1 that covers the policy committee messaging last time around. Okay. That I don't think that we need to change, but I do want to maybe spend a second on before we go into yeah. this round of policies because I think there could be an edit made to the suicide prevention and response policy. To the policy or to the wording of it in the minutes? To the policy itself. The oh, wording so of it in the minutes should be fine. It just maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So we can talk about that during the policy part. Yep, exactly. That sounds great. Thanks. Um, the only thing I wanted to ask uh, Becky about under 4.3, the Superintendent Evaluation Committee, um, principal rule handed out survey results and feedback that was echoed was having fewer half days and more full days off. There were 104 survey responses. I didn't know if maybe we should add in something about how it was overwhelming that people also wanted Fridays, just so that it's oh, written down yeah. somewhere? Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, I know you sent out an email too. Right? Yeah, it was uh, about 93% of the responses voted for right. Fridays. Okay, because so I know you didn't say that, so I just wanted to make yeah. sure that that was. Did we need to revisit that? Did we say we were going to do something about We just yeah. didn't change the last one, but I think we changed the last okay. one. We didn't change the rest one. We were going to come back and revisit oh, it, and I think yeah. that may be more problematic than it's worth for the rest of this year, just with okay. things that are already scheduled with field okay. trips and 
All right. Okay. That, we'll, I want to make sure because I thought we said we would remove yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so it's 93. Um, it was like 92.7 or something. It was just shy of 93% said Fridays. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, the only other thing I had under the principal's report, it was, um, I know what the intent was because I was writing about um, the senior joy and then the cultural passport. I'm just not exactly sure it was actually captured um, in the paragraph because it said cultural travel learning opportunity in kindergarten. And oh, there was cultural travel learning opportunity in kindergarten and first grade. I think that was maybe the holidays around the world. Oh, yes, that's what they Okay. And then it was the Senior Joy event. I don't know, it just says visit from seniors, which just kind of sounds like some seniors randomly showed up at the school. <laughs> so maybe, yeah, so we had <laughs> 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 so yeah, a bus from Riverwood State and people just got off. They're like, it's from a school. It was a terrible <laughs> idea, but. <laughs> All right, so maybe if we could just tidy up the language of the Senior Joy event yes. and um, the holidays around the world that it was kindergarten through second grade. Yeah. Um, and then it was the fourth grade. Um, I don't know French. It was the girls' lunch bunch with yeah. Miss Escalin that did the fly. So I just would like a little more, a little more detail. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> just to represent that um, a little clearer. All right. So um, we probably have to hammer up that language now, huh? Yeah. Unless you want to table it, bring it back. But let's. So 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 we can just say uh, principal rule reported students had a visit from the seniors during their senior joy event, in okay. you know, in between commas. Um, and then there was cultural travel learning opportunity in kindergarten through second. Second. And the fourth grade girls lunch bunch made a flyer. Created that. Created a flyer on healthy friendships, healthy relationships. Pamphlet. I think pamphlet. it's technically a pamphlet. Yeah. I was starting to think of the word. I'm like, trifle, right. bifle. <laughs> the pamphlet. There it is. <laughs> the words in this. All right. Great. And Dessa has two S's on the six. Oh, yep. Yeah. It does. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, any other alterations? Okay, so I'll, I'll move that we uh, accept the, what is it, hold on, these are long, January 11th public school board meeting minutes as amended, or approve them, I guess. Do a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and then we would do the January 11th non-public minutes, which are... Can make a motion to approve things. Okay. Yep. I'll second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. There it is. Okay. All right. So just make sure. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So um, since it, it occurred to me after I had started the thing, since we had let Andres go first, should we now let Molly go? Parents are out to dinner. Parents are out to dinner. Kids. Kids. She can. This is. Yeah, she, you're out for the night. You're having fun. She's here. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. We already lost thirty percent of our audience. We could be at home by yourself. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The call of the, that is the most amazing. Imagine. I, <laughs> What do you know, is that? Oh, I very much do. All right, so then let's move on to committee reports. Um, so the policy committee. All right, so before we go into this round of policies, I did want to address something that came up in the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I had mentioned within JLDBB, Suicide Prevention and Response, that one of the new regulatory requirements is that there needed to be a lifeline number on student ID cards. Mm -hmm. KES doesn't have student ID cards. I brought this question back to the policy committee, and I believe it's in sixth grade when ID cards start becoming something that students need. Got it. So, in terms of the policy, I think we have a couple of options. 
Um, the policy itself, down towards the bottom, section E is the part that uh, that highlights anything for student ID cards. I think we can either leave it as is and just know that it doesn't apply to KES students, or we can take it out. Well, can we just say starting in sixth grade? Well, that wouldn't cover our policy. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Well, then I think we should take it out because it, it doesn't apply to us. Would there ever be a chance where we would have student ID cards? I guess I'm thinking like okay. they have. Well, I'm just talking through yeah. Yeah. like if they if we had cards printed like for the lunch program and they had to use their card to buy lunch or like checking out a library. Like we don't have those right now, but could if we ever if we ever had cards. So maybe we would say if there are cards. Oh, okay. So you weren't saying that the original intent of the policy is that starting from sixth grade. You were saying that only in sixth grade, from there on up, they have yeah. ID cards. So therefore, it's not something that we do. Exactly. But if we did so, have ID cards. Yeah. So when you're looking at this policy, you might think this is okay. This is a Kensington policy. Right. Kensington Elementary School, but you get to that part of it and you realize that you hit a dead end. Yeah, we all bumped kids up. Don't on that. Need yeah. Student ID cards. So it could be just that you know you have something that points to a dead end. Maybe at some point in the future, if it becomes something the school wants to implement, then we have that requirement there, or we could simply remove it and update it whenever we need it. To. Well, I'm in favor of clarity, so I don't like the idea of just leaving it as is because mm -hmm. people will ask the same question we asked, which is, wait, do we have student ID cards? Mm -hmm. So can we ch can we change the wording just to say if students at the school have ID cards, then the number must be printed on them, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. What did you say? <laughs> I'm looking at Chris. Yeah. I don't that. know if you. Yeah. Is that like? Is that? Yeah. You can certainly put it that way. So, okay. so if ID cards are issued to students. Yes. Let's pull that one up. Probably lead right into the to the section with some language that would state like if you know, students have ID cards and then you move into it. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, so so we are we're changing that now. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, so I'll make a motion that we amend or that we approve the amended suicide prevention and response policy to accommodate a change suggesting that if students have uh, ID cards that they meet the requirements of the policy. Okay, I'll second. All in favor? So just so I would read this, if you're comfortable, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline shall be labeled on student identification cards and include the telephone number if they are issued by the school. The capture? If IDs are issued by the school, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or we could put that right in the front. Put you know, like, uh, so student identification cards. Like start off with if. Student identification cards? Yeah, like that same exact right. language. At yeah. the beginning. I, I like to start off that. I think it works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll add that there. And who is it? Remind me of who, who put the motion first? Me. Josh did. Uh, second. I seconded it. Thank you. All right, cool. I'll get that done. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Good catch. All right. Now back to the real, the real meat and potatoes. So nine policy changes this month. We have six of them that are revisions, and then three that are new. <coughs> Most of the nine are really updated to reflect changes in regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, the first policy, policy AC, non-discrimination, equal opportunity, we covered that a little bit or talked about it indirectly through what Andres was mentioning. And section, or, or part four within Heather's write-up kind of speaks to that, um, that requirement of the policy. And it's, it's mentioning that there needs to be a framework for developing a coordinated plan. And when you look at the policy, you'll see it in red line. You'll see that, um, that requirement that, you know, that, that part of the, the policy needs to go to the board and there needs to be 
um, you know, that, that type of uh, focus or input on it. I really appreciate this presentation that Heather has put together. Yeah, These it's are extremely fantastic. helpful. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, so, so that again is a revision. The first five or so are revisions. Um, Non-public sessions provides more guidance around the requirements for non-public meetings. Something that is updated within this policy is to note that the superintendent or designee is allowed to participate in non-public sessions so long as that non-public session does not focus on that superintendent or designee. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I don't know if it's called out within the policy now. I didn't realize that, or that to me was, was a notable item that uh, you know, I thought was interesting coming from this policy change. Is it a can or has a right to? It's a, it's a may. Okay. So, you know, if thinking about Chris here, Chris wouldn't have to be at the policy or at that meeting, yeah. but could be in the event that we wanted him to or you wanted to as well. Hmm. Next policy, air and water quality. We talked about this one not too long ago. It was recently amended to include some details around water quality. One of the new requirements that is dictated by law states that there has to be water bottle filling stations. I talked with Chris earlier. I do believe that we have two here on site, so we're going to be good shape there. Not a whole lot to say about crisis prevention, or at least items that I thought were notable, again, driven by new regulation. Fire and hazard, fire and all hazard drills includes a little bit more detail than what was in there previously. There's now a requirement spelling out that there needs to be six fire drills and four all hazard drills during the course of the year. All hazards are like other chemicals, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Reverse evacuations or lockdowns or. Oh, okay. This is what I'm asking. I didn't know yep. if it was like fire and like just yep. things like fire or like, okay. It's broad enough. <clears throat> Next two are new policies bomb threats. Fairly basic, stating that there's an expectation that no employer or student shall make a bomb threat. And it also iterates the criminality of making a bomb. A bomb or a bomb threat? A bomb. Making a bomb, yeah. Thank God we have that written down finally. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what? Yeah. This, this is all very educational and interesting sorry, to me. Like dark humor. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry. I know. Yeah, why? Did that happen? Uh, yeah. Okay. Pause exists because I know, I know. Trust me. Uh, buildings and ground security, another new policy. Um, it talks about the responsible parties for the building and ground security. Uh, and within the policy, we have identified the superintendent as that responsible party. One question that I had for this, and it's more of a smaller school. Um, if you look at bullet, um, second from the last, the school district employee must be on school grounds during an activity being conducted by an authorized school or community group. Oh, yeah. So that, that wouldn't fly here because you have rec no, in, the, yeah. in the gym. So another smaller school took that out okay. uh, because they want still have the ability for their rec department to be able to do that, not to have to have uh, a custodian or a yeah. the, the principal or a yeah. school person. Well, but the second, the second uh, are, are you looking at the sixth one now? Because the second sentence is only a school district employee will be allowed to open and close the school in the event of such an activity. Is that how it is currently? Who opens the school on weekends? Usually, key. What, which, which, which bullet are you on? I'm sorry. Bullet six, a school district employee must be on school grounds during activity being conducted that's by an authorized. Yeah, yeah I know, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So then the yeah. second, my, but that makes sense to me that somebody doesn't have to be here, but does that mean that we're giving the keys away to people who don't work here? Yes. Okay. Um, but they are controlled, like, at their, their keys only open the buildings at the time that we designate the key can Great. open the building. Okay. And we have to make the decision for them to yes. use the building. So. Yeah. Yes. When they sign the building use yeah. form. Yeah. No, I'm just I'm like yeah. pointing out that like it's not like it's trying to move. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. 
I'm so, comfortable with taking that out. I, I am too. That's why I was just asking because if it was the case that somebody was here every time, then we would need to keep that in. But if it's not, then that's fine. Yeah, let's take it out. I mean, it is a school district employee managing those keys. But yeah, I'm probably better just to just take it out. Yeah, okay. Because that would happen anyway. There's a motion. So. If we're taking it out, this is what exists currently? Yeah, I mean, this or is... is this a new one? No, this is a new one. Yes. Yeah, oh, okay. So then we don't need to... We would need to move to just... We, we just take that out, and yeah. then we will eventually that. approve that one. Yeah. Okay. Now, on educational surveys, it is a revised policy. The policy itself focuses on surveys to students, sets forth the requirements um, that, are, that are needed in order to distribute something that's non-academic. And then finally, a uh, relatively short policy at the end, relations with police authorities. This would apply if we decided to get a resource officer and mm -hmm. the policy itself provides some guidelines around what that relationship between the school district and the resource officer should look like. Okay. But it's it's that's another may, so it's a, it's written as an if, yeah. If you do have yeah. one. That's fine. Yeah. Um I did have a question. What kind of surveys are they talking about? Like the climate survey or the, this one read to me like like DESA? Okay. And we we do have we send the letter out prior to the DESA seeking yep. mm -hmm. parents that wanted to opt out. I was just wondering yeah. what it's talking about. Like what is the yeah. okay. Okay. All right, great. So um, are we approving these I, are? I mean, to me, I don't think that there's any reason to go through a second read with all right. of these. Yeah. So uh, I would suggest or, or I'm think that we should approve them all. Okay, great. So are to, we're doing them separately? You can do them all together if you want. So, yeah. all right, so I'll move that we accept Policies A C B E C E B B D uh, E B C A E B C B E B C C E C A E C A I L D K L G. One of those was amended though. E C A. E C A as amended. I L D K L G. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was a lot. Okay. Safety and security. Thank you, Josh. That's you. That's yeah, still no it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of work it's you're doing. Another batch next month. That's another fine. another nine or so that will come through then too. Uh, safety and security. I mean, yeah, I was only I, I was only there for the last ten minutes, so okay. it is, yeah, okay. it was not a full length meeting, and I was I had to. So. Okay. Yeah, I can give a quick yeah, highlight. Sure. Becky was there too. We had really good representation from uh, our first responders, fire and police, yes, uh, really grew. Yeah. Uh, it was really rich just talking about our plans and updating our plans and you know, the, the uh, requirement that came up in policy. Yeah. Uh, talked about uh, NABIDA and the work that NABIDA is doing and having um, threat assessment teams throughout New Hampshire. Yeah. NABIDA is your National Association for Behavior and Threat Assessments, which we are a part of. We have four teams at SAU 16 two at the elementary school and then two at the secondary level. Um, so we meet, we actually meet tomorrow for the one that I help supervise. We look at kids and that's becoming a, a priority. Uh, we've written into legislation, so we're much ahead of the curve. So we just talked about that and the training that needs to be necessary. Uh, and then Rich just talked about working with building principals for tabletops or other exercises. And then uh, some of the emergency plans he needed to update to get to the state. So that was the majority of the meeting, just our plans, what we're doing and, and talking through. There was a rich conversation around the recent um, hoax threat as well, exactly. and just kind of some of the troubleshooting that came out of that, and how can we do better next time, and, and it was mm -hmm. nice to have law enforcement at the table to be able to help talk through that as well, so. Okay. Great. Thanks. Uh, Superintendent Evaluation Committee, we haven't met, but um, we're, uh, Melissa was finalizing the goals and is passing those out to to Dr. Ren. So um, we, oh, actually, yes. And it was decided that we would start, uh, we're gonna kind of shift uh, the process of this. So so typically, this year has been all kinds of whacked out. So so typically, the superintendent, would we would have approved the goals at the beginning of the school year. 
Um, there's been some back and forth on those this year. Uh, but the uh, plan now is to actually start working with um, superintendent-elect, <laughs> with uh, Dr. Asbel before, like this spring, and start working with her on what she wants her goals to be and then have those locked down before school starts. That makes sense. Yeah, way more sense. Yeah. Way more sense, and then and then I think um, I think they were talking about maybe meeting with her just somewhat regularly, just to see how she, just checking in, basically. So I think that's going to be a great uh, way forward. Kensington School Study Update: We have still not yet met, but hope to soon. I think we're still looking for a date, right? Part of us today thought that it was March eighth. Maybe March. somebody made that up. I think we do have it in the thread. I'm just not sure what the date is. Because I think in my head I thought it was like two weeks ago. About it I While you're it. looking that up, can I go off um, Please. schedule for a moment? Okay, great. Well, because Jenny's part of the committee. Anyway, so Jenny, being your last um, meeting with us here, um, I can't imagine um, a more challenging three years oh. to be <laughs> a <laughs> school board member. <laughs> Um, between just just the year of COVID probably would have been enough for anyone to serve one year, but you stuck through all three years <laughs> of your term. I so appreciate your support you. of our little school in the, these last three rather tumultuous <laughs> years. They sure were. Years. Yes, they sure <laughs> were. And yet here you still sit with a smile on your face, and we just we really appreciate. Your thank school. you. So thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Yes. It's been quite an honor. I really, really mean that. So thank you. I'm quite sad to leave, actually. But you can stay. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got, we've got somebody capable coming coming. You guys have four, right? But yeah, I hope to come back. Thank you very much. It's been incredible and extremely educational in a lot of ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. All right. Did you find the date of our next I did not. I don't have it in my calendar. It doesn't mean that's not correct, so keep searching. I don't know. Someone thought March 8th, and then several of us were like, wait, March 8th? And so now, like, four of us have it in our calendar as March 8th. All right. Maybe later tonight I'll just send out a, an email and just say, hey, how about March 8th? Let's find that's that. Time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, where am I? General correspondence? We have nothing. Okay. Um, the SAU Communications and Community Engagement Committee is planning a meeting soon. Yeah, who's the committee rep for us? What is it? It was me. Well, it, was you. it will be. Okay. It will not be me. <laughs> it was going to I be me. I thought we were going to have that be a committee. Oh, no. I'm no, it is. Could because, um, oh, so at the joint board meeting. I think it might be short. Yeah, they they um, they uh, presented. Kim Meyer brought a yeah. um, presentation from an audit firm that talked about auditing the communications, and that is a decision that will be made um, by the committee. Is is who to go with and and how to go forward with that? Huh. I'm surprised it's not a joint board decision. It was presented to the joint board. I will, that was one of the things that was discussed. Should it be? I, I think. But I think it was generally speaking, it was just decided to be a committee thing. But they're going to be going through committee for committees. Okay. <laughs> to me, it seemed like the committee would be focused on looking at that on it, making a determination if we want to move forward with it or yeah. not, and then also thinking about you know anything connected with that on it, like you know. Thinking about how we would implement it, are there special things we want the audit to look for, etc. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I mean, I, I think, think it will boxing, eventually be a joint board decision whether to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, and to, I mean, the audit itself, based on what I saw in that meeting, is everything that we want it to be. Anything you could ever want it to be. Yeah. If we were to say no to this audit, then we would be back. We would say that uh, at square work. one. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. We would be back to square one trying to figure out what the communication is. So, so some people were asking, well, are there other bids kind of a thing? But, but I think that this particular company specializes in educational communication audits, and they did have um, 
there were a lot of uh, examples in the in the presentation. I can send that to you. Oh, it was in the it was in the um, packet for the last report meeting, along with. Um, I mean, some of their school districts have like 100,000 kids in it. 190, I think one of them had 170 or 190,000 kids. Um, and there were links to the actual audits, okay. and uh, also email addresses of people. People wanted to okay. contact them and say, "How did this go for you?" Gotcha. You know, that kind of thing. Sometimes they just go crazy. Like, can we just make a decision? Yeah. Why is it easier? Well, it's it's a, it's a, it's expensive, so it's not something that. Wanted, it was. You know, they, they wanted to make sure that they were really like, is this the best way to do this? Yeah, and it was proposal overview of what it might look like. We'll talk about it in the next meeting. Yeah. So I'm thinking that that communications me uh, committee meets in the interim, and then at the next room board meeting, there's a decision and it's done. Yeah. Okay. That's that was what I got from that. Is yes. that you too? That's yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's helpful in my commitment. Yeah. It's not. It's not. I don't think it's going to be a long. Thing. I think that the in my I mean I my that was my understanding is that it was if kind we of our hope people, that it wasn't going to be long. Right? Yeah, we come to a decision and work with with Esther coming in on what that would look like. And yeah, can we do an audit and from that audit we'll get yeah. ideas of what we need to do next. Yeah, pretty pretty cut and dry. Yeah, and Allison, if you if that you know if, if it's me and you that do that or you know, yeah, I think whatever makes sense. Yeah, at the next meeting we'll have to yeah move around for shuffle. Anyways. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on to biz business and financials. Right, oh, so I have to sign some manifests. Yes, I left them right here. You can sign. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so in the board pack is the current year financial. So what I did is I put in what matches your financial. So we are getting reimbursement from um, Northampton, um, and so. It is showing as an expense right now until we get the money back and I can relieve that expense. Okay. okay. So what I did is I put what the changes are from the prior month to match your financial, and then the amount we would be asking with the to is okay. So the big thing is uh, we start needed to add more money for fuel oil. So if you remember, for like fuel oil. So if you remember at la at the end of last year we. We made a prepayment to mm -hmm. make room in this year's budget. Mm -hmm. um, we've blown through that, and we need to add more. Um, so fuel is just a lot more expensive. Yes, it is. So that is the big driver of the changes from the prior month. Um, I don't know if anyone had any questions on any of the other items. Well, is that is any of that information coming from the summary page on on thirty? Is that or what you're talking about? Just line items that are within the details. Uh, so the are you you're, you're looking at this sheet right here? Yes. Yeah. So this is the changes from the prior month. So last month, um, in the January board pack, there was fifty eight thousand, and now there's twenty thousand. Is that the one you're looking at? Yep. Yep. So those are the changes that we've made since the last month. I see. Okay. And so I can we, see that fuel oil encumbrance yeah. number up there. So we've added a fuel oil encumbrance to hopefully get us to the end of the year. So mm -hmm. we just, this because this is this is not only actual expense, it's added encumbrances as well. So if we know there's another expense coming, um, we added an additional amount for fuel oil. Okay. Was twenty thousand. Did we switch banks? Yes, we did switch banks. Okay. To TD, okay. and we are actually earning a lot more interest on it, which is Great. phenomenal. Um, can you test oh, yeah, I saw your And so hopefully when we, we did send that invoice to Northampton, we're just waiting on the payment back. There's no question. Um, uh, Chris might be the better uh, answer to that. I mean, uh, she was, I, don't have, I don't have the money in hand yet, but I, I, the, the chances of, she's asking the chances of Northampton paying us, and I believe it's very good. Yeah, it's, it's negotiated. We have a we have a MOU. Okay, that's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah. I think we had yeah. paperwork yeah. around that, right? Yeah. Okay, that's more what I was asking. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> okay, I was like, right? Well There's no like, hey, hey. No. I'm good, no, good faith that you're gonna pay this bill. Okay. Yeah. 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 We we have uh, quarterly meetings, if not a meeting before that, and the work that Molly and her team did behind the scenes to make sure with Dr. Bennett, it's very well done. Okay. So, so the plan is we've sent um, the first bill, and then we'll be. So 
folks today. I don't have any questions. No, thank you. Want to stay and party with us, or are you going to go home? Or <laughs> I might enjoy some silence for a hot second. Sorry, what was that? Silence. Yeah. Oh, I'll just go home and I would just sit on my couch and maybe not even turn on the lights, and I would just. Um, <laughs> all right. So it's time for the principal's report. She's just pretty off to the. I think okay. your data, so I don't know if you want to move to the letters. Yeah. 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 So the letters. We had okay. So, so for for the thousands of folks watching from home, um, every year the third grade does the greatest project in the world, and it's the best part of being on the school board. Um, we get oh, I just went all the way up to the top. The third graders write to the school board and ask us. I mean, in um, their persuasive letters. And sorry, I got distracted by a thing, and so now I'm, I'm thinking about how I'm distracted by the thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, every year the third graders write letters to the school board, persuasive letters, asking for a change they would like to see in the school, mm -hmm. and um, it's the greatest thing. We get we get requests all the way from like, can we have shovels to can we have a new football stadium? It has to be a change that would benefit everyone. It has to be a change that would benefit everyone. Yeah. Who, 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 what does that even mean? <laughs> oh yeah, that is the greatest one. The one where somebody wants one of those yeah, yeah, right so much joy. And my favorite that. part is that Becky was like, "Okay, we can do no, that." I, 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 I already like that's on my Amazon like save for later. It is. Your child like to pump iron in the gym, so. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that is the greatest. My kid wants extra time at recess. That one is financially doable. <laughs> that actually, I was going to bring up. You this. actually have my letters, I think. Oh, are yes. they right there? Can I yes. see them? And I, I had emailed you just about that one. Yes. Yeah. And you got it. Um, I actually thought about the extra time at recess, and I do, I don't know the ins and outs of your schedule and coverage time and time and seat, and I know all those things are calculated, but for the school, what do you call your your the task the. I, I call it teacher club, but the school the teacher club, club. yeah, <laughs> the, the, the study. I was like, I don't want to call the school the committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The study. I didn't know if that's another thing to maybe look at as far as extra <coughs> time that could be used for collegial time. I don't know. So that was yeah. something that I thought was worth bringing forward. Yeah, I mean, and that's something that I believe has been asked for every year. Somebody's always asking for more. It's the second study. recess, mm -hmm. the specific specifically the second recess. Student. Was related to me. Exactly. <laughs> this is a student who may or may not have been your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so what else? What other? So yeah, that's. Sorry. So mine, I, I summarized. They're all adorable and actually very themed for some reason. All but one of mine are about recess and about different. I can't, I can't see that. That's what um, about, it's the most important part of their day. It is. <laughs> but actually, I thought what it what the what the theme was. They want something new or something else to do out there. Mm -hmm. So one student asked for weights and <laughs> weightlifting. One student asked for <laughs> bicycles to be added so they could ride on the track. One student asked for a spider web climbing thing. One student asked for the drums to be replaced with a slide. One student asked for lines on the soccer field, which I felt like that one was probably yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Um, So anyways, I just thought that was interesting that it was kind of on theme that they are interested in maybe in the next couple of years having something new out there. Like yeah, did I, the Gaga pit, yeah. so. I had one kid ask for, this is wonderfully specific, two dinosaurs that have steps that kids can climb on. Yeah, because trees aren't, we're not supposed to be climbing trees. So That's what, yeah. Us, that we need a dinosaur. Kids are climbing on trees and not listening, so they should climb on the dinosaurs instead. Oh, that's So that's, that's great. Yeah. Specifically then, dinosaurs with steps. Yeah, dinosaurs with steps. With steps. <laughs> Very specific, yeah. And I also had, had another request that uh, a child who may or may not have been related to me asking for all of the KES kids to play together at recess sometimes, which has, that's something that has happened before, but doesn't Different always years. happen, but yeah, mm -hmm. so that was the other recess, oh, wait, I might have had other recess ones, hold on. Mine was yeah, like I have to read too, like a lot of recess or outdoor type asks, Rakes. but I had multiple Rakes. that were focused on the soccer field, yes. football field. We actually talked about that at PTO last yeah. night in redoing, um, okay. get leveling, re-hide your seating, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Ye
yeah, having lines painted. So that's okay. something that the okay. actively helping us to perhaps okay. field some costs on. Um, part of that might have been a little bit my fault. Part of the grass is, has died over the years, but um, we haven't good. had a lot of snow, and so the kids are trying to find creative ways to use all the oh, shovels, and so there was a huge mud pit, and I let them have at it with the shovels yes. and the mud pit, which was tons of fun, um, but now it's really good. It's like a soccer field. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like today, they, they've, um, because we've got all these shovels now and no snow, so they've created a new game of shovel ball, which is sort of like broom ball and lacrosse combined, so yeah. they've got these shovel ball teams. Because shovel ball, it's great. I love it. I mean, it's That's great. fantastic. Becky had to hold my child stuffy while he played shovel ball. Yeah, so. yeah. So. I mean, it's that's the beautiful creative piece of I love it. Of recess is yeah. Yeah. just let him have at it and make your own game. And, yeah. And, yeah, which is fantastic. Yeah, Hedgie's not allowed. There was also a, a request for a, a kind of small. like a squiggly <laughs> tube slide. Yeah, um, and I also I the grass one. The grass ones that can't be properly supervised, but children do inside the closed tube that I can't see. Them. Yeah, oh, I see. I feel All like right. too. We oh. had one of those out there, and it was removed. Is that what the drums are now? That's what the drums. Are. Oh, <laughs> actually, and uh, one child asked for. I really like this one with the sunshade that I thought was love over yeah. the picnic tables. Can we have more trees? Oh, oh, they wanted to plant trees, and I, I thought oh, that was a really cool and very doable yeah, idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Let's plant that was, that was, um, there's something they could do with the shovels. Get those some trees, they can go dig holes. Maybe you could have, like, memorial trees or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. we could make it a donation yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be fun, too. They do. They have some they have great ideas. Um, also, uh, gym toys and rakes. Gym toys. What does that mean? Somebody who may or may not be related to an incoming school member. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Thank you for suggesting. Uh, oh, sorry, I wrote that. Uh, hold on. It was rakes and gym toys to use in gym. Mm. The rakes can be used to rake the leaves, and the gym toys, Mr. Stram, will mm. use for kids to play. They're not going to rake leaves at your house, but they'll rake leaves here. <laughs> <laughs> sure. That one might. I don't know. I don't know. Well, today I'm, I'm ca leaving school. I'm carrying 1,800 things. Oh, can and I get my children carry things? No, thank you guys. Oh, you guys probably carry something for your mom. That'll take some time. I don't, I don't take, I don't, I, you bring it, you carry it, it's yours. That's my But mom. all it took was her suggesting it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's probably what I should do. Yeah. Yeah. Mom like, I only had one more that I thought was actually a very, very good idea, and I have one child of my own who I know would be super interested in this, is a robotics team. Yeah, so Miss McCarthy is actually, I, that letter may have actually gone out today. Um, I do think it is geared for fourth and fifth grade students okay. at the moment because as part of that's what okay. she's doing with the grant that we got. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and these kids will be in fourth grade next year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also had a request. Grade, yeah. But then there was also, I also had a request for Spanish class. Yes. Oh. And so great. I've worked with a couple different, I've worked with, one mom this year, we were trying to get um, PEA uh, will send students to to do an after school program. We couldn't coordinate that with the days they could get off of campus. This, so yeah. we tried to do that this year. And I know I've talked with a mom in the past about trying to do that. I know there's definitely interest in the community of yeah. having some sort of language languages option. Well, yeah, and I, I wasn't sure what the option would be, so I said, you know. It, well, we will certainly talk about it, but in the meantime, I know that this child does know some Spanish, so I thought yeah. maybe he could run the club. Yeah, or, yeah. Te teach <laughs> teach some Spanish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the okay, so some of these absolutely are doable. Yeah. I I we're never really clear on exactly how we're going to respond. I respond to each kid and basically say thank you for your suggestion and yeah. may or may not be possible. We'll bring it. We'll talk about it. Um, and I also like to focus on anytime you have a question for the leaders in your community, you can always do this because that's really the point of this. Yeah. Make your voice heard. Um, but in terms of, I would love for them to know that there are several things that we're going to be actually looking into. Yeah. Um, is that something that we should be writing to them or can you bring that back? And I, Yeah, I can relay the message to them. They will be thrilled to yeah. hear yeah. that some of their things might be acted upon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did secretly look at some of yeah. the letters, um, and we did. We I did bring the field to the PTO uh, last night when we had our meeting. That was a very yeah. That was a very yeah. Repeated yeah, they're concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're in bad shape now. <laughs> it's time. It's time. It's time for them to mm -hmm. get a fresh. 
So, so we talked with Rusty, and you know, the SAU has a lot of equipment we can borrow. So we're talking about um, can we get some capsule <coughs> donated? We have the equipment to do it, and then the hydracy. So we're trying to see what we can have donated versus what we have the manpower to do with SAU equipment. And That's great. Does Harold ever help out with? Things like this? Well, we, they have our landscaping contracts, so they do all of our mowing or Harold's replacement now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and actually, Courtney Brady reached out to Ron, who took over um, the landscaping company last night after the PTO meeting. So I already got an update from Courtney this morning. So he's going to come and quote what it would be to, to do the two fields. Right. I'd love to circle back with the kids on sort of their vision, because one of their requests actually had they wanted a very separate does a football field, soccer field, kickball as three separate fields. Um, right now, football and kickball happen on the same field. So if we're really looking to separate that, redoing kickball would be very different if we're moving football to the other field. So maybe we need to come back with the kids on what exactly was your vision of three separate fields. Yeah. I was I was suggesting something about like temporary lines or some some something that they can put out there markers if they want to change the purpose of the field, but I don't know. But generally changes seasonally. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. It's usually a football field in the fall. And when spring rolls around and the fifth graders start practicing for the fifth grade versus staff kickball game, it becomes a kickball field in the spring when the kids start practicing okay. to try to beat us. <laughs> so if you could let them know that at least I know my letters were written before this conversation. <laughs> so some Mine of them, out, some so. of them will be. Well, I, I brought them, and I didn't. Um, I was, I was, sent you the oh, you emails okay. you gave me. Sure, I mean that one, so the other child one, and then <laughs> you can circle back to these if you yeah. didn't actually give the kids yours yet. Where I oh, good. I figured. I was like, I don't have one. You can't give one kid a return no. letter. Yeah, no, you, can, you don't have one. I'm glad that you did. That's yeah, I was like, if I don't send it back, I'll lose them. So. <laughs> Um, all right, so then the principal report. Yes. Um, oh, I'm sorry, you're writing. But, but no, I just reprinted um, our mid year I buddy data. Thank you. Um, sorry. And so fifth grade um, ended up on the, uh, the back, so there's just one thing on the back. Oh, we should close public comment. So this is, these look very similar to the graphs I think I, sh or the reports that I showed at the very beginning of the year that had um, sort of our, our overall growth from last year. Um, this is just mid-year. Um, and so again, the, either the end of the year, depending on when the June meeting hits, or maybe the beginning of next school year, I'll show you the full year's trajectory that we similar to what we had looked at. Um, so I don't know which one you're looking at first. I have the reading one first, which if you look at the top, it says Country Cat Elementary School and then reading. So we have, um, you know, kind of broken down by grade level. Um, not all of our kindergarten students take this assessment. Um, it does require a certain level of basic um, sight yeah. word knowledge and not all of our kindergarten students have that ability to really access this assessment yet, but those who could, um, you know, really we have them take it. Um, so you see kind of where we are. And nothing on this is surprising to me um, as far as like where kids are meeting their grade level expectations mid-year. Are things looking a little more Mm, typical, like a, a, as they did pre-pandemic, or are we still? We lacking? didn't use this assessment pre-pandemic, so okay. this is you can't. We can't compare this assessment to the Got star it. because yep, it's not the same. Yeah, it's yeah. not the same <laughs> assessment. So we unfortunately started using this assessment during the COVID year. Right. Okay. So we don't have a pre-COVID okay. baseline. I was just. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't our look baseline. like we're <laughs> lagging too much. So I yeah. Mean, it's, um, and then. On math, um, oh, on the other one, you can see um, again, like just kind of where we are as far as proficiency and um, you know overall placement towards towards that grade level expectation.
And obviously, like we as teachers, we can drill down into these more. You know, we mm -hmm. click on grade levels, click on specific students, and we can drill down. And each of the students, we can see by domain. So we can see. Um, we can drill down into the phonics domain a little more and see which students are appearing you know, in that red part or that yellow part. And we can drill down into the vocabulary piece and look you know, more individually at students and um, you know, what they need in their instruction. So. Yeah, thanks. Great. Nice to see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know it makes more sense when we get to the end of the year. You can kind of see the whole, like, where we started and where we finished. Um, but, you know, we, we are keeping track of how we're doing and looking at growth. I mean, that's the most important piece. Um, you know, are the kids making growth? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Great. Um, yeah, and then I think my, mm -hmm. my report. Um, I started with um, just sort of wrapping up our cultural passport, which was such a fun night to have um, our closing ceremonies, which we haven't been able to have in person altogether for several years. So it was really nice to um, have the kids have the opportunity to have the audience of their families to show all that they've learned about Greece over the last month or so and all of their specials classes. So um, I know the kids were super excited. Um, it was an awesome event. They really have, and that just was like a highlight of what yeah. they've learned, obviously. Um, and I was just, and I was super proud of all the parents that got up and danced at the end. I. I was sort of prepping the kids for like, well, mom and dad might not want to, or like, don't be, and like, mm -hmm. we had 150 people in the dance yeah. floor, so it was really, yes. it was a lot of fun, and you could tell the kids were just super proud to, they were, yeah, that was um, really cool, and, um, you know, our, our really good arts teachers have just done such a great job, and immersing them this whole, this whole month, everywhere they went, yeah, so it was great. Um, and the team will start to meet this spring to determine, um, you know, where we travel to next year. We try to honor the heritage of a, a family in town, and, mm -hmm. um, a family, you know, within our KES community. So we'll, um, we always have choices. We've always, you know, even in our small little town, there's always yeah. um, families that are willing to help share their, their culture and their heritage with us. So we'll try to make that decision by the end of the year. Um, do parents approach you about that? Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah, yeah. I've had um, I've had two parents approach me about next year. Good. Already, so yeah, that's great. And um, yeah, and sometimes we revisit countries that flags that are up there. You know, we'll circle back to them. Okay. Um, if there's another family, so we're not. It, it's not out of the question to circle back to. I was wondering that. So I was looking at that list. I'm like, oh, okay, my my <laughs> traditions are up there <laughs> <laughs> represented. <laughs> yeah. But so we'll try to. I mean, we we. Try to do something new, but um, that's fun. Um, under meaningful learning, I was just um, highlighting some of the things that we were doing this month with um, Black History Month. Um, I highlighted some of the things that second grade was doing. Um, they've had a lot of conversations about um, Martin Luther King Jr. and um, they've had a lot of great conversations. And then they were using um, his life as a model and how to start writing biographies. Um, which then sort of segued into what they're doing in third grade, which choosing their own um, person to research and then and doing their own research. So they're sort of like doing it together in second grade and then, um, you know, this year in third grade, moving on to um, doing their own. But the kids, um, you know, they're really, again, Andreas was talking about how we do things developmentally at elementary level versus middle school level versus high school level. and. Um, just having some conversations with the kids, they really are starting to understand the importance of advocacy and making a difference, and um, you know, just that that important piece of having voice. And um, yeah, it's been it's been fun. Um, and then um, thinking about like the biographies that the third grade students are doing. Um, again, this is where the beauty of combining content. We've got social studies and ELA competencies and ICANs merging together. So they're doing research with you know, famous historical people. So um, it always makes more sense for kids when you can connect learning yeah. lots of ways, so, yeah. Are, um, are you noticing, when you look at having worked with kids for your whole career, 
are you are you noticing that there has been an increase in that understanding of the need for advocacy and and all of that? Are you seeing more of that? Um, I'm not so sure. I see a difference necessarily in what what we've always believed at school to be important. So, right. like, I think as teachers and educators, we've always yeah. encouraged kids to find their voice and. Um, and be an advocate, but I do think there's maybe a greater societal um, awareness yeah. of that that maybe is more prevalent than what it used to be. That's kind of what I was asking. Yeah. Are, you, are you seeing that reflected in the kids now? And also just like the changes in, in the resources and the materials and, mm -hmm. and the focus and all of that. I'm, I'm curious to see if that's actually being reflected in the, in the kids and how they treat each other and how they talk about the world and all that. Yeah, I mean, I think the goal of what we always try to do with them in these conversations is to try to make the world a smaller place for them. Mm -hmm. Like, and yeah, um, it, the world is a big place, but we're all sort of in this big small place together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if that makes sense. Um, and your your voice is just as important as their yeah. voice, and that's great. Yeah. Um, and then under health and well-being, um, I was just highlighting some of the work that Nurse Heather and Mr. Stramel are doing. They're co-teaching health lessons right now together in the classrooms. Um, they've started with some body systems, digestive systems, that sort of thing. And with the little kids, they've done some basic hygiene things and, you know, making them wash and putting their hands under the, the blue lights to see how, much, how many germs are still on their hands. And... Um, so that's been great that they can sort of tackle that as a team. Um, and uh, as we get closer into the spring, um, they'll shift those conversations of our fourth and fifth graders into more um, puberty and body kind of discussions. Mm -hmm. And again, that's great for them to be able to do that as a team for our older students. So, yeah, yeah, it's great. I think they, um, Nurse Heather also sent out a s'more about that. So she let mm -hmm. parents know that they're starting to talk about body systems and digestive because I think sometimes children come home and say what we talked about is not actually what we talked yeah. about. <laughs> so I think she was trying to clarify that for some parents that might have been confused about the conversation at school. <laughs> That's great. All right, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, old business? No old business. Pupil related matters? None tonight. Personnel? Okay. Uh, we, we hired uh, somebody, oh. so they'll be able to start in a couple weeks, but um, we've been able to hire, uh, we have somebody um, back in the kitchen helping a few days a week. We don't have that fully filled, but um, uh, Karen Clark started with us. What? That was the one last month who, who gave. Because yeah. oh, we had all been wondering. Yeah. Like, what, what happened? Yeah, yeah. after you guys left them. Yeah, so Karen Clark is with us now three days right. a week in the kitchen helping Dad, and she's lovely. She just jumped right in. She's awesome. had lots of lunch and experience, and great. so that's been pretty seamless. So Great. Yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. All right, uh, do we have any need to go to non public tonight? I don't, know I, don't, any. I don't have anything for y'all. No? Okay, great. So our next meeting is March 15th, the day after the election. Mm -hmm. And I'll say thank you to everybody here, Chris, you, you especially, for all of the help that you have given me in the last great. three years. And Becky, you too. So you guys have been fantastic to work with. <laughs> You're awesome. Thank yeah. you for your time. That's awesome. It's Thank great. You. you guys are a great board. Yeah. So. Thanks. Yeah, super yeah. Lucky. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll move that we adjourn at seven twenty-one. Do a second. Do we need to close the public? I already did. I, I slipped it in there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have?